Hello again, my name is Jeff Tehan. I'm a quality engineer on the Red Hat CloudForms product. Um, today I'll be continuing with my video series on integrating CloudForms 4.0 with the Microsoft Azure portal. Um, we'll be covering the new features of the Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6.7 and 7.2 that are now available as templates on the Azure Marketplace site. So let's just jump right in. I'm going to show you how to create it, how to edit it, and how to connect to it. So thank you very much. I hope this is helpful. The first thing I want to show you is that I've been using uh, Red Hat 7.2 on Azure for some time now. Uh, what I have here is a virtual machine that has the latest CloudForms uh, 552 image on it. Um, it's running. It has an IP address and it also has a, a DNS setting here and I'll show you how to set that up when we configure the the RHEL 7.2 image. What I'm going to do is connect to the portal. Um, I'm going to use the DNS instead of the IP address. Um, the thing about the IP address is they are uh, dynamic and if you leave the machine off for a while and restart it you may and probably will end up with a new IP address but if you set a DNS then that's always going to be valid regardless of what the IP address is. So consider that when you're configuring your system. And then I just want to show you a likely unrealistic scenario, but um, one I found interesting. I'm actually running CloudForms on Azure, and I'm using it to manage my Amazon AWS account. I've actually added Amazon as a provider in here, and as you can see, I have um, tons of VMs I can choose. All right, so we're going to go back and then with the IP address you can also connect directly using SSH uh, to the appliance or in um, my case I use PuTTY uh, for this Windows demo. Uh, but you simply connect to it and then it's um, whatever password you set when you configured your system. Um, I'm just using the default stuff. And that's basically how you connect using SSH, the same way you would um, if it was an internal machine. So I have three VMs right now, and I want to do some power state um, transitions at the end from CloudForm. So uh, I'm going to turn one of these off so I can turn it back on later. Uh, to create the Red Hat uh, virtual machine, you want to go create a new object. And I'm just going to choose see all here. Um, we want a compute resource. And I'm just going to search for Red Hat, and there's Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7.2. So I'm going to select this image. Um, CloudForm supports the resource manager mode, so I'm going to create this in the resource manager um, interface. I'll give it a simple name so we can identify it. Now, pay attention to the username here. It cannot be root. Root is built in um, to the images by default, and it's basically not accessible um, unless you do some custom configuration. And then you need a password. It needs to be a valid password, um, usually eight characters with um, special characters, etc. And then the VM size, they always recommend more than I need, especially for demos. So I'm going to go find something cheap here. Uh, that's about. 12 cents an hour I can afford that and for the settings um, you can change all these values I'm, I'm going to use what I currently have selected which is um, my JTRG resource group uh, the CFME virtual network with the default subnet um, you can drill through these yourself and and see how you can custom configure them and with that done we'll just click OK we'll start creating this virtual machine and you get a little message in the top there if you see a bell that's the status area so I go back to the virtual machines and um, this will update automatically but I'm just gonna refresh it to speed things along here and there we go demo rel 72 and it's being created and if we refresh this again it'll transition to updating which means it's been created now it's just changing state and then finally to running um, 
this is all time lapsed here. Um, it takes about a minute or so for the for the smaller images. So let's go ahead and take this IP address and um, connect to the VM just to make sure it's running um, that we can connect to it uh, and then we'll come back and do some additional configuration. So I have the IP address. You only get an IP address if it's running so I'll make sure it's running. Um, I changed pages. I can see the IP address on the background page there. Um, I'll go ahead and save this out in case we want to come back in a minute. And open it. We'll add the key. Um, it's not root. Don't use root here. So I created CFMEQE. And I created a valid password. I'm just going to type that in. And I'm not going to do anything in here. I'm just going to show you that I am connected. Um, it's working. So we'll go ahead and uh, just exit out of here. I'm going to type exit here and do it cleanly. So let's do some of the network configuration tasks here. Again, you want to click on the public IP address. And then over on the settings, there's a configuration. Um, there's two settings I like to change on all mine. First of all, the default timeout is four minutes. So um, after four minutes, it'll, it might look like it's locked up, but really it just timed you out. So set that to the max, 30 minutes. And then the other thing is I'm going to create a DNS address for this. Um, like I showed you on the CloudForms uh, appliance, we use the DNS address um, so that we have a, a a permanent address reference we can use other than the IP address. And we'll go back to PuTTY. This time I'm just going to enter the DNS instead of the IP address. Um, you don't have a lot of say. The second part of the IP of the DNS is the location and then it's cloudapp.azure.com. But you can set up all that stuff custom. Uh, some things cost more money than others. So I'm logged back in and uh, we will just do a f one or two more things here um, and then I'll just um, echo out the, uh, the version string and you can see it's Red Hat Enterprise Linux server release 7.2 so we are indeed running. So at this point you're pretty much running and you can go in and start performing whatever server tasks you need to perform. I'm uh, just going to give you a tour of um, where to find the objects that were created. If you'll recall from when we created this I put it in this uh, storage account. Um, from storage account the VHD images are contained in blobs um, files is for file sharing and then it automatically goes into this VHD folder um, and these are basically all the the uh, VHD images as well as the uh, JSON files for creating the virtual machines um, here's the one I just created here uh, defaults to 30 gigabyte but you can expand those and if you wanted to you could just click the download button and save this image out and use it um, for future VMs. And let me give you a, a quick um, demo of the security groups. Uh, security groups allows you to find specific access for this VM. So you can limit the IP addresses that can connect to it, um, the inbound and outbound ports, uh, etc. So if this was a VM and you only wanted to be able to connect to it from your home IP address, you could configure that. Uh, as well. And the SSH are built into um, the Linux images. If you wanted to add like access to a web server for example, um, we can create um, an HTTP um, uh, security rule and then we could limit that. Oh sorry, the destinations port 80, the source 
This is where you could make it anything or just a certain subnet. And then you can limit the protocols, etc. So we'll add a TCP here. So that's uh, how you set up uh, security rules. You can create a global security rule or you can have one for each VM or any combination. So the rest of those links you see on the left side, uh, most of those towards the bottom are applicable. Again, there's the, um, the jobs uh, drop down that looks like the bell. Um, that's pretty much it from that point. Lastly, what I'm going to do is connect to my, uh, my local uh, CloudForms appliance here. And we're going to do some management of Azure, specifically those VMs that we uh, created. And we're going to do some uh, power transitions here. So you want to log into your account. You want to go under Cloud Providers. Um, this is not the same uh, appliance as we showed you the Azure stuff on. So this one just has my Azure account. Um, you can see there's three VMs. I'm going to do a quick manual update. This would update automatically, but I don't want to wait. And when the screen refreshes over on instances, you'll see four now instead of three. So let's go over and look at these instances we have defined. It's loading. Here we go. And I just want my Azure instances. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to so let's go ahead and filter this list uh, for just my Azure instance. And there's the VM we created. As you can see, it is showing up as RHEL 7.2. It does have an IP address and it is powered on. Um, again, the 10 dot IP addresses are just to connect between VMs. So just before I do this, we'll just double check. The RHEL 7.2 is running and Windows Server 12 is stopped. So I'm going to go under power and we're going to stop this VM. Uh, stop is the equivalent of um, save and terminate is where it actually deallocates it. Um, the difference is uh, one you're being charged and the other you're not. So let's go ahead and refresh this and there you go it's stopping and then what we want to do is just Take demo test WS12 and we'll go back into CloudForms. And I'll still have my filter applied. So I'm going to select that. As you can see, the icon for RHEL 12 or RHEL 7.2 was off. And what we're going to do with this one is we're going to start it. We'll drop back into Azure one more time. Do a refresh on this screen, and there you go. One is stopping, and the other is starting. And that's how you configure RHEL 7.2 on Azure. And thank you very much for your time.